So today, um, like I had said, I was going to make this video. Uh, I'm going to be presenting some results, okay? Likely results you may be presented um, to during your biomedical scientist uh, interview question to see, they may want to know your understanding about such results, okay? So once again, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. I've been working in the UK as a specialty biomedical scientist in hematology and transfusion sciences. And currently, I'm a lecturer here in the United Kingdom. So, by the end of this session, what I hope to achieve is that we should be able to identify ways to increase the chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. And what I would like you to focus in, in trying to increase that is to focus how I'm going to be telling you stories of every result that I'm going to present. And that storyline is what you need to give to them whenever they ask you or present such uh, results to you during your interviews. So what you are going to do is that once you get to the results, okay, you know, that I'm going to project, please try not to continue playing the video. Try to pause it and look at the result. I would suggest that you have a goal on what to think about the result. Then after that, you can play the video to double check your answer with what I've said. Okay, let's look at case number one. So if you look at this case number one, you will see that everything here is normal. Why? So when it comes to uh, iron now, you don't want iron now to be more than 1.2, okay? But to some extent, maybe you can allow 1.3, 1.4, but once it's starting to 1.56, it is high, okay? And we had already, had already made a video what that means. I have made a video about raised PT iron now, raise APTT, low PT iron now, low APTT. So you can look for that video. So today I'm focusing mainly on the result. So then if you look at the APTT, it is normal. So you want APTT to be between maybe 22 to 38, as the case may be, okay? Then fibrinogen, if you look at it again, is normal. You want fibrinogen to be between 2.0 to maybe 7.0, as the case may be. You don't want d dimer to be more than maybe 500, as the case may be, okay? So this whole result is normal, and what it means that there's no any problem, okay? Intrinsic pathway is doing well. Extrinsic pathway is doing well. Common pathway is doing well. No problem. This person is not an anticoagulant. Sample is not clotted. There's nothing to suspect. So everything is normal. But mind you that this is not the kind of result they are going to present for you during the interview. I just want to start this to show that this is normal. Okay. So let's look at case number two. If you look at case two, what that should catch your eyes from what I've said here is that PT is raised, meaning INR is raised, and APTT is raised and fibrinogen is very low, okay? So what this could mean then is that there are a lot of things that this can mean, okay? Number one, because fibrinogen is low, I want you to pay more attention on that because remember that fibrinogen is a common pathway. So even though there is extrinsic, intrinsic, they will meet at the common pathway. So if there's a problem with the common pathway, it's going to prolong this result of whether PT in terms of extrinsic or APTT in terms of intrinsic. So my focus will be because why is this fibrinogen low? So if you look at this, this fibrinogen being low then could suggest a lot of things like one, maybe this sample is clotted. And why would you say that? You would say that because for clots to form, fibrinogen will be converted to fibrin and that could reduce the, the level of fibrinogen in the system. So, because of the sample may be clotted, that could explain why this fibrinogen is low, okay? And because it's low, it has not affected the APTT and PT, okay? Now, what would you do? You check the sample for the clot, and if it is clotted, it explains the result. Now, but if that sample is not clotted, okay, remember you might need to check other things like hemolysis or lipemic as the case may be. But if it is not any of this problem, then what would then happen is that it is possible that this person is on a certain anticoagulant that maybe has had a negative effect on the fibrinogen. And of course, the anticoagulant has been reflected on the APTT and the INR. So this, if that is the case, that means the person's anti the, the anticoagulant that the person is on has a, made this AP, INR to be raised. APTT, of course, is raised, and then the fibrinogen is low. Okay, so that explains that, that the type of the uh, anticoagulant the person is on is affecting the fibrinogen level. So that could be the, the reason why this result is like that. Now, let's look at case three. So if you look at case three, what I'll catch your eyes here is that everything is normal apart from APTT. APTT is very low, 
okay so because apt is low remember i told you that you want apt to be between maybe 22 to maybe 38 as the case may be okay so to some extent you can maybe say 20 but 20 is very low so because it is 19 it is is very low therefore what you do you, this sample could be clotted okay even though fibrinogen is normal you know um um pt rnr is normal but don't think once for APTT is low it could be a clotted sample but in some cases if you check it the sample may not be clotted and therefore this result will be due to what we call activated sample meaning that maybe when the sample was collected it they were collecting other samples and left uh, clotting uh, coagulation sample to be the last one they collected and because of that that sample once the person put the syringe or vaccine as the case may be on the patient vein the clotting factors is activated so the more the person take time to collect that coagulation sample the more it will affect the aptt so this could be due to activated sample okay that's if you check it is not clotted it could be due to activated sample so let's look at this result this case for now okay so look at this case for you will see that pt is normal rnr is normal but aptt is low very low and the fibrinogen is low so what would you think when you see something like this first of all i would like to start by saying remember that ptr now they are extrinsic so this so when it comes to ptr now you mean i want you to think in terms of maybe um maybe there is external factor that cause someone to start bleeding like somebody cutting his in any part of his body or, as, or being stabbed as the case may be once the external factor is likely to affect okay the clotting factor that is be activated on that sit on the, in such situation will be extrinsic coagulation factors okay but then when it talks about something intracellular like maybe sample has already been collected inside the sample okay that what may be likely to be affected may be mainly intrinsic pathway and because of that you will see that it seems like extrinsic was not affected okay meaning it was not a problem from the like i've said external factor but from the internally maybe the sample had already been collected is not in the sample tube and while it's in the sample tube maybe it was not properly mixed okay because now what that should cause that sample to be activated to the clot the clotting factor to be activated is in the sample is mainly intracellular okay so because of that if the sample is then clotted that means again fibrinogen has been converted to fibrin that's why there was a clot and that will explain why the fibrinogen level in that patient's sample is low again that will explain why the aptt is also low why because that intrinsic clotting factors activation affect mostly intrinsic pathway so that's why this result is like this this sample is clotted and that explains why the fibrinogen is low and of course that explains why the aptt is low but then ptrnr is normal now once again what i want you to understand here is that it's just one of those things that once you see them once you see this kind of result you check it for a clot and of course i would expect this sample to be clotted and once you've seen the clot you reject the sample okay and ask for a repeat so yeah that's what happened in this occasion okay so if you look at this case five what you're going to see in case five is that the ptrnr is raised but the rest is normal what it means that the problem here is from the extrinsic pathway okay so what you need to do you check the sample is it clotted no it's not clotted you check the sample is it underfilled no it is not underfilled if it was clot if it is clotted or underfilled that explains the result but this kind of result maybe is not clotted it's not even underfilled this person may be on anticoagulant such as warfarin and that explains why it is like that because warfarin you know target extrinsic uh, pathways or factors now but in some cases if you check this and the sample is not clotted is not underfilled the person is not on warfarin it could be due to factor deficiency or inhibitor remember what i said before on the RAs, rnr and pt so when you think it could be factor deficiency or an inhibitor you then have to do a mixing study okay if you do a mixing study on this case it's going to be pt 50 and that will be 50 percent of the patient sample 50 percent of the control you mix it together and repeat this pt rnr okay when you repeat it if it comes back to normal it means that it is factor deficiency don't forget what i said before because it means that the, in the control sample that the factors there has compensated the factor deficiency in the patient sample then that explains the result 
But if you do the mixing store, the PT50, and it's still prolonged, that could be an inhibitor. Therefore, it could be because there's some inhibitor, inhibitor in the patient sample that is inhibiting the clotting factors in the patient sample and also now in the control. So what are you going to do? If you suspect a factor deficiency, you do a factor assay, such as extrinsic factor assay. Then if it's an inhibitor, you might look at things like lupus anticoagulant test. Now, let's look at the next uh, case, case 6. So if you look at this case 6, you are going to see that PT 0.2, uh, INR of 1.2 is normal. So we're still going to say, okay, this is normal. But then if you look at the APTT is raised, then you look at the fibrinogen, fibrinogen is normal. So if you look at all these things, you see extrinsic factor is okay. Common pathway is okay because fibrinogen is normal. But it seems like there's a problem with the intrinsic pathway, okay? And now the APTT is raised. So remember, I told you the APTT should be maybe like 22 to like 37, 38 miles more than to say that. Then, because it's 41, it is raised. So this person is possibly on anticoagulant such as heparin, okay? So because of that, what you're going to do, you check the sample is not clotted, is not underfilled, then you check whether the patient is on anticoagulant such as heparin. If the patient is on anticoagulant such as heparin, that explains the result, okay? But if the patient is not on anticoagulant such as heparin, again, you start thinking, is it a factor deficiency or is it an inhibitor? Then you can do a mixing study again, but on this case, we'll call it AP50, okay? So you do a mixing study, 50% of the patient sample, 50% of the uh, uh, control sample, you mix it together, repeat it. If it's correct, again, factor deficiency. If it doesn't correct, inhibitor. Then you can do uh, the same thing about whether factor assay, just on this occasion, it will have to be intrinsic factor assay, or then you cannot look at um, um, lupus anticoagulant as well. But can I also say that if it is a factor deficiency, remember what I told you before, use that uh, um, something like a fresh frozen plasma is rich in clotting factors. So fresh frozen plasma can be prescribed on this kind of occasion to be able to compensate you know, um, that deficiency. Now, let's look at this D-dimer. If you look at the D-dimer result here, you see that it is raised, okay? 5,000, okay? So what happened then is that you now have to think in terms of okay ah is it that this person is having internal bleeding or is it that this person have a dvt d vent thrombosis or pulmonary embolism as the case may be okay so any of those things okay that can easily activate in uh, uh, clotting clot clot in the system like dvt or pe could explain why this very d dimer is raised or if it is not that situation maybe there's internal bleeding and that is why this dilemma is raised. So that is the kind of result they may present to you, and that is the kind of the answers that you might need to provide to them. Now, before I conclude this, I would want to say a few other things, okay? Now, whereby you think that fibrinogen is low, don't forget, uh, cryoprecipitate can be prescribed, okay? And when cryoprecipitate is, pres is prescribed, why do they do that? They do it because cryoprecipitate is rich in fibrinogen, and that can help to increase the level of fibrinogen in the person's system. The secret of what I want you to see here is that in coagulation, when they present any result for you, it's going to go towards whether the person is on anticoagulant, okay? And it will also go towards, do you understand mixing study? Do you understand what it means to know whether it is defic factor deficiency or an inhibitor, okay? Then it must also go towards, do you know about activated samples? It must also go towards, do you know that the sample may be clotted or hemolyzed or lipemic or high blood pressure, as the case may be. So once you put that together, that is how you can be able to give a story regarding whether the result is normal or abnormal when it comes to um, your question in coagulation. So I would want to say thank you very much for um, listening, okay? And I would want you to put a comment, keep telling me how the video has helped you, then I can also see and tell me what you want me to do in terms of to help, or maybe there's any aspect you think I can cover, I'll be able to cover that as well for you. Thank you very much once again till I come back your way. Thank you and bye.